Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Remember to like and subscribe for bad or bad guys next time you play. Maybe. Happy Halloween, everyone. We're celebrating this with one of my favorite movies of all time, Van Helsing. Is it a perfect movie? No. Is it a fun movie that scratches my itch for swashbuckly adventure movies? Hell yes. CGI might have aged terribly. Costuming is very early aughts, but with an abundance of classic monsters, spooky castles, and Hugh freaking Jackman, rewatching this movie is a Halloween tradition for me, and now it should be for you too. Ladies and gentlemen, I give to you Van Helsing! He did the match. He did the monster match. The monster match. It was a graveyard smash. He did the match. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need to find monsters with a plethora of lore and hunting skills. Next, we need to kill those monsters with big damage specifically for them. Finally, we'll make sure that our weapons are able to pierce the most monstrous hides of the undead. For stats, we're using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just keep your dexterity and wisdom high. So then start with dexterity. It's used for ranged weapon attacks and your crossbow is a ranged weapon. Wisdom next, God likes you and you'll need this to bless your weapons. Constitution after that, vampires like to suck the life out of you, so this makes sure you've got something left over when they're done. Intelligence will follow, you need to be well read on monsters and magic to hunt monsters with magic. Strength is lower than I'd like, but you'll get to add your proficiency bonus to athletics and strength saves to mitigate that and we'll dump charisma. Your hand handsome but gruff like a gothic crime dog big spoilers for the end of the movie you are an angel technically speaking but he never really does any asimar stuff he doesn't glow he can't see in the dark he just seems like a human sorry variant humans can grab a feat the crossbow expert feat is frequently used here because it's very good you can fire your crossbow at melee range without disadvantage. You can fire multiple shots in one round, which is good because you can also use a hand crossbow to attack with your bonus action if you've already taken the attack action. I'd classify your repeating crossbow as heavy, but hey, I won't judge you if you'd rather use a smaller one. Bump your dexterity and your constitution with your two free points, take acrobatics for your skill of choice, and build your own background for arcana and religion proficiency. Call it the Blessed Amnesiac or something. That sounds cool. Was it in Hugh Jackman's writer that he has to play amnesiacs, or is that just a weird coincidence? Kick things off as a revised ranger, it's just like a regular ranger, but good instead of bad. You get three skills from their list, perception, survival, and athletics are useful for finding fiendish foes. To better track your favorite foes, use favorite enemy on undead. This gives you plus two to damage against them and gives you advantage on tracking them with survival and investigation checks. Vampires are considered undead, so sadly no monstrosities. But maybe metagame a bit based on the campaign your DM pitch, no judgments from me. You're also a natural explorer, giving you advantage on initiative rolls, advantage on attack rolls against creatures who haven't acted an initiative yet, and you can ignore difficult terrain. You also get a plethora of survival skills that you can use if you're in that kind of campaign. Look up the Unearthed Arcana online. It's free as long as you've got an internet connection, which you do if you're watching this video. Second level rangers can pick a fighting style. Archery would suit you best, giving you plus two to attack rolls with ranged weapons. You can also learn some ranger spells like Hunter's Mark, which puts a target on a creature that lets you deal an extra d6 when you hit them with a weapon attack. Detect Magic lets you sense magical auras and know what school of magic created them. Probably a bunch of necromancy and transmutation in your line of work. Third level rangers get primeval awareness, letting you spend an hour to gather how many of your favorite enemy are in a five mile radius, their exact number, and which way they're moving. You can also communicate simple ideas with beasts and figure out how to calm them down if they're freaking out. Not something he does in the movie, but you know, do that. You can also pick a conclave. The hunter conclave is all about taking down weird enemies. Hunter's prey lets you pick an option to take down foes. Giant killer lets you make an opportunity attack against creatures that are large or larger than large after they've made an attack against you within five feet. Mr. Hyde is a big boy. You need every shot you can take. Fourth level rangers get an ability score improvement. More dexterity makes you more accurate, which means that the monsters are less alive, which means the villagers are less murdered. All good things. 5th level rangers get an extra attack, letting you attack twice instead of once as an action. If the first shot doesn't kill them, maybe it's time to repeat yourself. Because it's a repeating crossbow. Anyway, you can also learn 2nd level spells. Find traps lets you know what kind of traps are in a 120 foot radius, but doesn't tell you their location. So find probably isn't the best word. This also doesn't apply to things that weren't made to be traps, like loose boards on a bridge. Still, Dracula's castle has its defenses. This will help you know what to look out for. 6th level rangers get improved favorite enemy, letting you pick another type of enemy to be good at booting in the ass. Frankenstein would be considered a construct. Also, yeah, I'm calling him Frankenstein. He refers to Victor Frankenstein as his father, so conceivably, his last name is also Frankenstein. 
No need to get upset about a name. But since Frankie McSteinopoulos is a nice guy, maybe go for Fiend instead. Your bonus damage increases to plus four, and you get advantage on saving throws forced on you by these enemies. So no vampirism for me, thanks. All of this extra damage is kind of moot if they can just resist it, so let's go to church and pick up some holy water. First level clerics can choose a divine domain, and you're fighting the war on the undead, so war cleric is my pick. As a war priest, you can make an attack with a bonus action if you've already taken the attack action that turn, which means that your heavy crossbow can now make three attacks per round, but only an amount of times per day equal to your wisdom modifier. You can learn three cantrips. Sacred Flame is a little holy water grenade, forcing a dexterity save on a creature, dealing 2d8 radiant damage if they fail. It also ignores cover, which is nice. Spare the Dying also automatically stabilizes a creature, rolling death saves, but if they've already failed, whoops, they died. Light creates a light so you can see in the dark, useful in a spooky castle that isn't big on natural lighting. You get some free first level spells as a war cleric. Divine Favor adds 1d4 radiant damage to your weapon attacks for up to a minute depending on your concentration. Shield of Faith gives a creature of your choice plus 2 to their AC for 10 minutes, it's also concentration. From the cleric list, Detect Evil and Good lets you sense aberration, Celestials Fey and Undead within 30 feet of you for up to 10 minutes, and get a read on whether or not the area has been consecrated or desecrated. Protection from Evil and Good gives those types of creatures disadvantage on attack rolls against a creature creature of your choice, and they can't be charmed, frightened, or possessed by the nasty or holy things. Finally, Bless gives up to three creatures of your choice a d4 to add to attack rolls and saving throws for up to a minute. These are all concentrations, so pick and choose. Also, remember your multi-classing casters, so check out page 165 of the player's handbook to figure out your spell slots. Second level clerics get a channel of divinity. All clerics get to turn undead, forcing a wisdom save of 8 plus your proficiency bonus and wisdom modifier on undead creatures and forcing them to flee if they fail. You could also use a guided strike to add 10 to an attack roll if if you really need to hit. This will pair well with a feat we grab later, no spoilers though. Third level clerics can learn second level spells from the war domain you get magic weapon, letting you give a weapon plus one to attack and damage rolls and it's magical so Dracula won't be able to shrug it off like your old bolts. Fourth level clerics get an ability score improvement, cap your dexterity for deadly shots, even to things that are already dead. Back over to ranger, seventh level hunter rangers get a defensive tactic of their choice. Steel will gives you advantage on saving throws against being charmed or frightened. Those are typically wisdom saves, which you're still pretty good at. Now we could bump your wisdom at 8th level of ranger, but you're really not using a lot of spell saves, so instead let's shoot more gooder. The sharpshooter feat lets you fire at long range without disadvantage. You can ignore all but full cover and take a minus 5 penalty to your attack roll to add 10 to the damage. Oops, did that make you miss? You got guided strike. Add that to the shot and put it right between the vampire's eyes. You also get fleet of foot letting you dash as a bonus action in case you gotta go fast. Ninth level rangers can learn third level ranger spells, but really none of these are sticking out to me. So I'll just point out that you can buff magic weapon to be plus two to attack and damage rolls with a fourth level spell slot instead of a second, which you have two of right now. Tenth level rangers get to hide in plain sight, letting you give your enemies a negative 10 to their perception checks to find you if you don't move, helping you blend in, even if the vampires are using their freaky bat sonar stuff. 11th level hunter rangers get a multi-attack. Volley lets you attack all creatures you want in a 10 foot radius with ranged attack as long as you have the ammo. This is great for covering legions of minions. 12th level rangers get another ability score improvement. Bump your constitution. Your spells are actually more dependent on concentration than they are on saving throws. We'll finish this off with some more cleric levels. 5th level clerics can learn 3rd level spells. Crusader's mantle works like divine favor, but for all of your allies within a 30 foot radius, so give the whole party an extra 1d4 radiant damage with their weapon attacks. Speaking of holy weapons, this level also gives us access to 6th level slots, so your magic weapon can be plus 3 to attack and damage rolls. With all of your attacks from volley, this can really add up. You've got a plus 18 damage modifier with a sharp shot, a penalty that's fully neutralized from your archery bonus and magic weapon, and attacks on all the creatures in a 10 foot radius, meaning you could do up to 200 damage in one round as long as they all stand next to each other and you don't miss. Your turn undead also bumps up, now destroying undead that failed the save of challenge rating one half or lower for a big holy water grenade. Sixth level war domain clerics get war god's blessing, basically letting you give your guided strike to an ally within 30 feet as a reaction. Honestly though, you're probably shooting harder with sharpshooter than they are, save it for yourself to kill things faster. You also get a second use of channel divinity per long rest, so don't stress too much about spending it. Seventh level clerics can learn fourth level spells, but again, not really feeling any of these. I just want more backups for magical weapon and the eighth level stuff. Speaking of, eighth level clerics get an ability score improvement. Again, constitution is better to help you keep your spell slots up and make sure you don't die. You also get divine strike, letting you add a d8 to the damage of one weapon attack per round. Finally, your destroy undead now works on all undead of challenge rating one or lower for all the half-born vampire spawn. 
Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this is. First, you can shoot the hell out of Hellspawn. With a 22 damage modifier to Fiends and Undead after sharpshooting and magical weapon, at least two attacks per round, potentially more with War Priest and Volley, you don't need to be afraid of the dark, the dark needs to be afraid of you. You're also very durable. With almost 200 HP, maybe 200 depending on your rolling, decent AC and ways to abjure yourself against evil monsters, it's hard for them to hit you back in a meaningful way. Finally, you're a great hunter with skills and spells to find where the monsters are hiding. For weaknesses, rangers hone in on one type of enemy, but in the wrong situation, that's not very helpful. Anything non-undead or fiendish fully ignores your favorite enemy bonus. You're also lacking in charisma, making you easily banishable, and while you may excel at killing the monsters in whatever plane you're sent to, plane of fiends is a whole plane. That's a lot. Finally, you didn't invest in wisdom, and while I explain why, that means your turn undead saves are pretty low. Good thing you can destroy undead with a repeating crossbow then. Arch the archdevils, make the undead un-undead, and turn Dracula into a convenient pincushion for the convent sewing circle. Just remember that you're tough, not immortal, and neither are your friends. Be wary those who hunt monsters, lest you become one. Z dinner. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, subscribe for more. We make two videos every week. If you want to know what's on the schedule for next month, including polls on the videos, join the Patreon. It's just a dollar and it's in the link in the top right corner of the video.